Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you my latest uh, Imprint uh, Blu-ray pickups. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Imprint is a boutique Blu-ray label here in Australia, and I was kind of put off them at, at the start uh, when I first saw them um, at JB Hi-Fi. Uh, they were 30 bucks each, and for a Blu-ray, $30 is new release territory, and I was looking at older films. Like, I, I was never really into that, and I kind of snobbed them off at, at the start, snobbed them off hard, um, because I was just like, 30 bucks, really? Um, but I bought, uh, The War of the Worlds, the, uh, 19-whatever one, the old one, and, um, yeah, amazing. The quality is amazing, and they are limited releases, uh, the ones that I have, so the price turned out to be fairly reasonable, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my latest pickups. Before I actually show you my latest pickups, I actually wanted to talk about this one for a second, this is Waterloo. I showed this in a previous video, and I've since had the chance to watch it, and before I bought it, I had people uh, describing the battle scenes in this as amazing, and I honestly think amazing is an understatement. Wow. You know, when I was watching the battle scenes, I was thinking that, wow. Um, the battle scenes really are phenomenal. Um, this film was actually shot in the USSR um, in 1970, Another thing about that's another thing about imprint. Um, they actually have the year of the film um, film's release on the spines, and um, yeah, so shot in 1970 in the USSR for a budget of 35 million dollars, and um, 35 million in 1970. I think that worked out to about it was over 200 million in today's dollars. So this is an, an expensive, big budget film, and um, yeah, it, it looks like it too. Um, they actually hired 15,000. Uh, real soldiers to play the, um, as extras, to play the, um, soldiers in the film. So, if you haven't seen this, it's amazing. I mean, Rob Steger, who I've since, um, you know, I've become familiar with him, and he's a, an amazing actor. He really is. And, um, Christopher Plummer, I, I know him as the old Christopher Plummer. I mean, he looks young in this one. I've noticed that about these old films. A lot of the old actors today star in these films, and they just look so young. It's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah. If you haven't seen this and you're into your whole battle scenes and things like that, um, <laughs> just amazing. You should pick this one up. Um, I don't think you can actually get this anymore. I think this particular copy sold out, but I think they do have a standard copy without the slipcase. So you might be able to pick that one up if you're interested. So, on to the, uh, new pickups. The first one is the, uh, the Bob Hope Collection. So it's got the Ghost Breakers and the Cat and the Canary. Um, this is a box set. So um, this is my third box set, and they only have four, so I've just got one left, which is the Film Nior. I think it's that's how you pronounce it, Film Nior, or something like that. Um, that's the most expensive one, so I left that to last. But um, yes, I picked this one up, and um, there's the back of it for anyone that's interested. And uh, yeah, so number 16 and 17 in the range there. So um, yeah, I'll open it up. One thing I noticed about this one, it doesn't have the pine smell, so they must have used some different process for that. And, uh, yeah, so, again, it has the, uh, two movies in there, just like the, um, Major Dundee box set. It's, it's basically the same thing, they've just put two different films in here this time. So, um, yeah, really super nice. I love these clear, um, cases. Love them. So, um, for those of you who are interested, there's that one, and here's that one. Whoops, there you go. Um, yeah, so, um, these, um, I've started watching them, black and white films. I've, there's always been something about them that I can't stand, so I've really had to, um, go out of my comfort zone with these ones. That's what I love about this label, getting me out of my comfort zone, getting me to watch movies I would never normally watch. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna try my best to get through these ones. Um, they're probably good films, I just gotta get past the fact that they're black and white, so, um, yeah. Um, let me just open these up. And show you the inside. So, um, there's the inside of that one. Just terrific. I, I just love, like, what they've done with this, like, because the, the, um, the standard editions of these films, they come in the, uh, the standard blue Blu-ray cases. So, um, yeah. That's why I'm trying to rush around getting all these ones. There's the, uh, inside of that one. So, um, yeah, Bob Hope is not an, an actor that I'm familiar with. Um... <sighs> yeah, I'm just I'm just not familiar with him. Uh, one thing that does worry me is um, this has a new 2K scan of the film, 
But this one's just a 1080p presentation of the film, and that's got me a little bit worried because, um, well, I'll explain that later, but it just got me a little bit worried, but it's probably all right. I mean, it's a black and white film. But yeah, these box sets, honestly, they're so nice. Such amazing packages. I mean, that's one thing that really gets me with, um, when, when they release stuff like this is when attention has gone into the packaging as well. I mean, yeah, the, what you're buying is these films, but the presentation of them it looks good on a shelf, and that's what really draws me in, is something that's going to look good on a shelf. When I have people over, it's going to draw them in and, and get them interested. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I love that about this range. Next one is I Married a Monster from Out of Space. Um, I honestly think I got the last one of these in my state. Um, this is number three of the range, and... Um, yeah, so this is another black and white film. Um, it looks alright, I started watching it, and I, the, you know, the picture was actually quite good. It's just black and white, I gotta get past that. So, um, 1958 though, I, I was surprised it was black and white. Um, yeah, I was just a little surprised it was black and white for that time. So, um, yeah, let me get this out, so I can show you the inside. There's the inside. Well, that's not the inside, that's the, the cover, and, um... The inside is, um, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Okay. There's that. So, um, yeah, I, I just love this range. They, they, they just make it so exciting, you know? Like, before you even start watching the movie. Like, the packaging, the presentation, everything about it's already exciting. Next one is Sorry, Wrong Number. And this one is number two in the range. So, um, yeah, this one here I didn't actually have, there were, there were plenty of copies of this one around for some reason, I don't know why. So, um, there's the front, and there's the back. Damn that reflection. So, I'll show you the inside. Look at me out. Okay. There's the inside. And there's the inside of the inside. So, uh, yeah, I haven't watched uh, these ones yet, but um, I'm slowly getting through them. I like to, I don't like watching them for the sake of it. I like putting them on and devoting my time to them, you know, because these are movies that I would never normally watch if they weren't in this range. So I, I want to really focus my attention on them and learn what I can about the early cinema. The Day of the Locust. Um, this one here, um, this one was weird. It was a weird film. Um, and the picture was so terrible. Um... This was 1975, um, I have no idea how they filmed this, or maybe there was something wrong with the original negatives or whatever. Um, 180p presentation of the film, so I, I don't know what went wrong there, but um, the picture just looks terrible. It looks, I feel like I need to have glasses on when I watch this, so um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of blurry. But after like the first hour when things start getting a little bit interesting, I, I kind of forgot about it, so yeah, there's that. So there's the... Um, Back there, this is number 13 in the range, and um, it's got, um, what's his name? Donald Sutherland or something? Ronald Sutherland, no. Donald Sutherland, I was right. Um, but it has um, him in it, and um, here's the inside, and the inside of the inside again. Um, that lady there, she's the leading lady in this, and the guy is her father. Her father's weird. I mean, she's weird, but he's weird too. Um, I mean, they're all performers, so I guess it's normal to them. But, um, yeah, it's it's a weird film. Like, um, it, it's all about, like, early um, filmmaking and things like that. So it really drew me in. That side of it, I was just like, I wanted to see more of all that. But, you know, I guess the movie's about more than that. So, um, yeah, basically she wants to be an actress, like a big actress. And, um... Yeah, she, this dude here, he, like, Donald, Sutherland, Donald Sutherland? Yeah, he's, um, I don't know, he's, he's, he's weird in his own way, he's, like, quiet, and then at the end he does something really fucked up. I mean, like, it, it was, I don't know if it was really fucked up, I mean, I've seen worse, but it was one of those things where I was just like, is that fucked up? And I was like, yeah, that, that, that is kind of fucked up, you know what I mean? But, yeah, the whole movie he acts like, innocent and shy, and at the end he just turns into this, this completely different person. So, um, yeah, it's just, the ending was weird. Really fucking weird. I mean, it was exciting too, but it was, it was weird. Just a weird film altogether. Um, 
I did enjoy it. I'd like to watch it again, and maybe I'll be able to understand it more watching it a second time, but, um, yeah, just a weird film. Um, great sound, um, but crappy picture. Next up is, um, Night Falls in Man- Night Falls on Manhattan. It's basically about this dude here. I recognise him from, like, The Godfather. Um, Sean Casey is just another idealistic assistant DA until his prosecution of a cop-killing drug lord catapults him into the centre of New York's temptatious political arena. So, um, yeah, it's basically about him prosecuting that dude, and then there's this whole deal about police corruption and whatnot. Um, very good film. I was, I enjoyed this one. Um, it was one of those ones that, I don't know, um, the story wasn't really interesting, but it was interesting enough that I loved it. It was, that's kind of a weird way of putting it, but I, I just really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it wasn't that great of a story, but it, I just, I still enjoyed it. Um, this is the front cover there of the case, and here's the inside of this one. Um, that's, uh, that's his love interest there, she's the chick he falls for in the film. Um, yeah, there's always, there's always got to be that little love interest story happening in these films. Kind of gets old. But yeah, brilliant film otherwise, and number 10 in the range. Next up is the Carpet Bagler, Carp Carpet Baglers, Baggers, Carpet Baggers, okay, the Carpet Baggers. Interesting name. Um, every generation has its modern carpetbaggers, its adventurers, adventurers who gamble everything to stand head and shoulders above other men. So, um, yeah, uh, this is going to be an interesting film. I haven't watched it. Um, this is number nine in the range. So, um, yeah, I have not seen this yet, but um, it does sound interesting. Um, inheriting his father's explosives company, young tycoon Jonah, Jonas Cords rise to power is ruthless as he adds a Hollywood studio to his empire and morphs into his stepmother into a and morphs his stepmother into a self-destructive starlet. So um yeah I'm actually really keen to watch this one now that I read that. Um yeah I, I briefly glanced at this when I bought it because it was just like number nine and I was just like oh, I need number nine. So um I bought it and um like I said some of these films turn out to be really really good and I wouldn't watch them otherwise so um yeah might pop that on within the next few days. And the last one is uh, No Way to Treat a Lady. And this one is about a plumber kills a dowdy matron, a priest kills a dowdy matron, a policeman kills a dowdy matron. All of New York trembles as a sixth strangling is reported in the papers as the man with the makeup kit stalks another victim. So um, yeah, it's basically about, again, Rob Steger, who is, who's that guy there. Um, he plays, um, this dude who goes around strangling women, and, um, he, every time he strangles a woman, he's dressed as a different person, has a different voice, has a different background story, um, and he's really, really good. Um, his characters are really on point, and, um, he's a, he was such a good actor, honestly. I really enjoyed this film, and I didn't get to watch it at all, because I got, um, had something I had to rush out and do, but I got through about half of it and loved his character. I can't wait to watch the rest of this. So 108p presentation of the film, and it looks amazing. Um, no complaints about this one. So um, there's the front, there's the back. Yeah, um, I can't tell you enough what a good actor that dude is. So um, there's the uh, front cover. Like um, that's the dude that dresses up as you know as different people and kills people. Um, this is the detective that tries to bring him down, and that's again the love interest. So, we open it up, and there's the lovely couple. So, uh, yeah, um, so I am thoroughly enjoying this range. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have any complaints about it so far. I mean, other than that, you know, the Day of the Locust one, that one was just crap. Where is it? Yeah, the Day of the Locust, um, it, the picture was just, it's really bad. I don't know how they released it the way they did, and, um... Yeah, I mean, it is watchable. I mean, um, R2MyD2, he, he's another YouTuber on here, um, and he, he was saying the same things ages ago when he did a review on it, that the picture is terrible. It is watchable, but it's it's also not very good either. So, um, yeah, other than this one, this is like the first disappointment I've had. Um, 
you know, it's a weird film, but I'm going to give it another go. Um, and the picture was, was not very good. So I'm guessing they wouldn't have released it that way if they had any other alternatives. So I'm guessing that there's, that's just how it is. So, um, yeah. But, um, this, this whole imprint range, yeah, this whole imprint range, um, I'm, I'm just loving it. Um, yeah, so definitely this is going to be the one that I'm collecting from now on. Um, I also have, um, what is it, number four? Or number five? I've got one coming, um, what is it, the day it to, oh, I can't remember what it's called, it's the Elizabeth Taylor one, I can't remember what it's called, but I've, um, had to order that from another store, because I couldn't find it, and, um, I'll be picking that one up, but after that, I've got wave one, wave two, and I've almost got all of wave three, so, um, yeah, I'm catching up, so, I'm gonna leave this video here, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe, if you didn't, feel free not to subscribe, <laughs> but, um, hopefully it helped you kill some time, so, until next time, ciao for now.